Y'all, I have power from the Tesla Power Walls. Brian was texting me and helped me jump start the gateway. I got wire, I cut off a boat trailer with this. Tesla Power Walls have a fatal flaw that you need to be very aware of. I experienced it firsthand and I almost was without power, even though I had Tesla Power Walls. So the mistake was when I lost grid power, I came into my breaker box and I just flipped everything and turned the main breaker off. You cannot do that. Even if you're freaking out and your roof is leaking and your fire alarms are going off because water's leaking through your smoke detector. I just had a very chaotic experience and I didn't think clearly. I should have just cut power to that one room. But now you know, do not cut power to your entire house if you have Tesla power walls. Because if you do, there is a 12 volt battery somewhere inside the system that will lose power. And it's the source that starts these. Once that 12 volt battery is dead, they will not start back up. And guess what? I called Tesla. They couldn't send a tech out for obvious reasons because the entire area was decimated by Hurricane Ian. And they told me there is nothing I can do. So do you know what would have happened? These would have been, what is the word I'm looking for? These would have been paperweights for the eight days I lost grid power if I didn't find this like hidden documentation online. Now let me show you how this works. Keep in mind, I did not tell you all this if anything bad happens. But I think you should be aware, if you ever come across this, you need to jump your system. Yes, like you would jump a car. Let me show you. Once again, you didn't hear it from me, but this might be good information to know in an emergency. Do not try this just for the sake of trying it, but it is good to know and have the appropriate tools. So we have to take a single screw off the Tesla Energy Gateway and it will expose the innards. Again, I don't suggest you do this because I'm not sure what type of trouble you can get into. If we're looking at it like this, there is literally a spot to jump it. Can you see? There's two holes, a positive and a negative. Yes, you can jump that with a car battery. I'm just gonna demonstrate this. I'm not gonna actually do it because I'm sure it's not good to continuously jump your system. So I have a normal like car battery jumper. So, you know, like cables you would clip onto a car battery. And I'm like, how the heck do I get this in there? So I literally clipped the wires from our jet ski trailer. Like I just found some wires. It's probably not ideal, but it worked. And then what I did, I clipped them and then I just like stripped them like this. So there's wire showing. I folded the wire over a little bit on itself because you need to be able to fit this in the holes. I don't want to I don't want to put it in the hole, but I'll show you. So there's a hole right here and I use this wire and I know it's not focusing, I'm sorry. But basically I just fold it in, folded it in on itself so I could put it in there and it was, it just held. There's those screws and I tried tightening them and they didn't do anything. <laughs> um, so yeah, just make sure the wire's tight in there so it doesn't have much resistance. It can be a little bit janky, it's fine. The other issue I ran into, you can see this, it does not clip on itself. 
So I basically had to make the other end just fold it over on itself. So, you know, it would just kind of make contact. So I did that. And then I did the same thing with the other one. I'm sure there's better ways, but this works. So I did that. And it was very hard to get this right because I had to get the jumper very close. And this is the positive. So I put that in the positive hole, which for mine is on the left-hand side, just right in that left hole. The negative, I put on the right side where it says negative. You can see where it says jump. And then on my jumper, I turned it on. I just did on and it jumped. And I left it on for a little bit and I had no clue it did anything because obviously it's not a car, it's not gonna make noise. I came into the garage and what did I see? I saw life in the power walls because they were dead. There was no green light, there was no flashing green light. It was completely dead. But after I jumped them, they were just blinking. I was like, oh my gosh, I literally jumped my Tesla power walls. I had no clue that was even a thing until just <laughs> until a few hours ago. And when they were when they were basically blinking, that means they were looking for signal, looking for power. So at the time, I had all of this off where it says GFI under pole right there. I flipped that on. So basically, it was enough to turn that power on and also the power above my garage. And when I flipped that, the light automatically came on and the power walls were on. And then, the, and then that basically gave enough power to the solar inverter to start. Right now, I was kind of um, terrified to like overload the system as it's starting up, so I just let it do its thing. I pulled up the, um, I was able to connect to the Tesla Energy Gateway. I waited for the solar to come back on. It came back on. And then basically, I started like one by one, just turning some stuff on. I didn't turn on the water heater at first. I didn't turn on the car charger at first. Um, you know, oven, just basically all the normal stuff. But um, I didn't know I was able to turn on the AC. And I have a moment I remember of the AC turning on. But then over the course of like the next day, as I just got more um, comfortable making sure these, these were up and working, I was able to get the water heater on, I was able to charge the car, everything. So like, um, remember, remember, remember the fatal flaw with these power walls, you cannot cut power to them. Also, I don't think you can turn them off either. Like, maybe I'm mis mistaken, but I got a text from Tesla saying like not to turn them off to conserve energy. So I would just not touch anything that would potentially affect these getting turned off. If your power goes out and you have an issue in your house that you're concerned about, do not flip the main breaker. In my situation, I had flooding in my master bedroom. I should have just turned that off. But you know what? Not everyone is hit by a category four hurricane directly from the eye wall for hours. It was a very stressful situation. Looking back, I'm sure there were many things I could have done to prevent this issue. It was stressful to say the least. Luckily, I did have a friend texting me. They, f they found my number to make sure I was okay and they actually texted me some tricks how to do this because I had no data connection. So thank you, you know who you are. Brian from TikTok. <sighs> so yes, know this exists. Know what to do to avoid, avoid ever having to jump your system. But I think it is good to know, just in case, that you can jump your system and know why you would need to, but know what to do to prevent it to begin with. 
And know if you jump your system, it very well could uh, put your warranty at jeopardy. Tesla is not suggesting you do this. Their techs have to come to the house to do this for you. So y'all didn't hear this from me, but you heard it from me if you know <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Okay, hopefully this is helpful. I guarantee you if you watch this and you have Tesla solar and power walls, this may very well save your butt because if your power is knocked off for a week or more and you make the mistake like I did, and then you hear Tesla telling you there's nothing you can do until the grid comes back on, you're gonna be a little bit angry. I was ready to have Tesla come in and rip off all these solar panels in the power walls, but thank God for my janky setup. Like, <laughs> come on. I can't believe this worked.